This is the Lenovo Legion Y520, a gaming laptop from 2017. Back in its day, it was a pretty solid mid-range system, but here in 2025, it's definitely showing its age. Inside we've got an Intel Core i7 7700HQ, a 4-core 8-thread CPU paired with an NVIDIA GTX 1050Ti with 4GB of VRAM. That was decent for budget gaming years ago, but today it's considered entry level at best. And the real problems? It only came with 8GB of single channel RAM. And worst of all, a mechanical hard drive. So let's give this machine a second chance. The first upgrade was replacing that mechanical hard drive with an NVMe SSD as the main drive. And I also added a SATA SSD for extra storage. This should make Windows and apps feel much snappier. Then I installed another stick of DDR4 RAM, which brings the total to 16GB and enables dual channel mode. That's important because dual channel doubles the memory bandwidth which means the CPU and GPU won't be held back by slow memory access anymore. I also repasted the CPU with fresh thermal compound. Old paste tends to dry out and lose its effectiveness. So fresh paste helps keep temperatures lower and performance steadier. And finally, I undervolted the CPU. That means lowering the voltage without lowering the clock speed which reduces heat and power consumption. The result is less thermal throttling and more consistent performance in long workloads. Now the first noticeable improvement was boot time. With the old hard drive, Windows took about a minute and 12 seconds to load to the desktop. After installing the SSD, that dropped all the way down to 18 seconds. And this isn't just about booting. Programs launch faster, games install quicker, and everything feels more responsive. An SSD is the number one upgrade I recommend for any older machine. Next, let's check CPU performance in Cinebench R20. At stock, the laptop scored 1400 points after upgrading to dual channel RAM, the score increased to 1560. After undervolting, it went up again to 1650. That's about a 17% improvement in CPU performance overall. Then I ran the CPU profile test in 3D Mark. At stock, the CPU scored 2482 points. After enabling dual channel RAM, it jumped to 2682 points. With undervolting applied, it landed at 2,615 points. So the memory upgrade gave us about an 8% boost, and the undervolt result looks slightly lower. But that's not really the point. Undervolting isn't about chasing the absolute peak performance. It's about keeping performance stable, reliable in longer sessions, which short synthetic benchmarks don't always show. On the GPU side, I ran the Steel Nomad Lite test. The GTX 1050 Ti scored 2300 points at stock with averages about 17 frames per second in that benchmark. After the memory upgrade, the score was basically identical and after undervolting, it went up about 20 points, still around 17 frames per second. So the GPU didn't really change which is exactly what I expected. RAM and CPU on the volts don't directly affect the GPU horsepower. But the important part here is that the GPU stayed stable and didn't throttle. Now on to some real gaming tests. Starting with Counter-Strike 2. At stock, the game averaged about 40 frames per second and you can clearly see the stuttering and big FPS drops. Not great for a competitive shooter. After adding dual channel RAM, the frame rate improved to about 60 frames per second, and while there were still occasional dips, the overall gameplay already felt much smoother.
and once I undervolted the CPU, things really stabilized. The average FPS climbed into the 70s, 1% loss were much higher, and in certain areas I even saw spikes into the 200s. More importantly, these, those big stutters basically disappeared. For competitive gaming, consistency matters more than raw averages, and undervolting delivered exactly that. CS2 went from frustrating to genuinely playable. Next up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, uh, which is far more demanding on the GPU. At stock, the game ran at about 36 frames per second. With dual channel RAM, it, it notched up to 39 frames per second, and with undervolting, uh, it held steadily at around 40 frames per second. So the averages didn't change much, because the GTX 1050 Ti is the bottleneck here. And finally, Jedi Fallen Order, which was the biggest surprise. At stock, it ran around 30 frames per second with consistent dips that made it pretty much unplayable. After upgrading to dual channel RAM, performance jumped to about 40 frames per second, which was already a lot more comfortable. This game streams a lot of assets as you move through the world, and single channel RAM with only 8GB was really holding it back. But after undervolting, performance climbed all the way up to 55 frames per second and it stayed stable throughout. No sudden drops, no stutters, just smooth gameplay. That's nearly double the stock frame rate. So let's put everything together. Booting into Windows went crazy faster with the SSD, Cinebench CPU performance improved by 70%, in 3D Mark, we gained about 8%. In real games, the changes were even more noticeable. CS2 nearly doubled in frame rate and became stable enough for competitive play. Shadow of the Tomb Raider only gained a few frames, but micro stutters were reduced and frame pacing was smoother. And Jedi Fallen Order went from unplayable at 30 frames per second to smooth at 55 frames per second from outdated and sluggish to surprisingly capable, and all it took was an SSD, dual channel RAM, fresh thermal paste and an undervolt. But there's one more challenge ahead. Windows 10 support is ending soon, which means this laptop's days are numbered. So in the next video I'll try installing Windows 11 on this unsupported machine to see if it can survive in 2025. And if that doesn't work, maybe I'll try Linux instead. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.